Well, super shalom everyone. Um, it's going to be a very quick recording. I want to talk about why they chose Barabbas. You can read about this in the Gospels. When Jesus was sent before Pilate, he was sent to King Herod, because King Herod was the client king in this region. They all set a Roman governor to keep Herod in check. Uh, Herod could not find any guilt in Jesus, so Jesus was sent back to, um, to Pilate. Now understand, when Pilate gave them the chance to choose between two criminals, now Jesus was arrested as a criminal, so he was considered a criminal um, in the legal sense uh, of the term. But there was no proof of any guilt over there. There was not even proof of any specific crime. Then you have Barabbas. Now, what I want to ref reveal to you during the first century, and of course the territory of Rome was a bit smaller, this province was not part of the empire, it became a part of empire in 44 AD. Also, Britain was not subjected yet to Rome neither Tassia. So, even though the direct territories were a bit smaller, Rome was still the dominant world power and world leader when it came to economics and politics and also to culture. And what happened was, many of the Judeans did not want to merge into the Roman world. So you had many sects and cults that formed groups and began to fight for independence. So there were domestic terrorists among the Judeans that would attack both Judeans and Roman officials. Well, both the Judeans, I mean the, the Judean Jews, and the Romans that were present, and the other peoples from the empire were fed up with those terrorists. So they began to prosecute them mercilessly. And Barabbas was one of those um, political rebels. He was a robber. So he was literally a terrorist. Okay. But now hold on a minute. What did the Romans do? Now understand this. In ancient times before uh, the Greek Empire, um, Judea has been enslaved by the Egyptians, by the Babylonians, by the Medo Persians, and even in the times that the that Judeans and the other Israelite tribes were still here. You had Syrians, Assyrians, all kinds of nations that came against them. Now, during the Roman time, actually, especially since the Greek Empire, officially, there was a homogeny over here, but still you had two Greek dynasties that were fighting each other, but since Rome established their principles, there has been military peace and because of that trade could flourish within Judea so when you think about it the Pax Romana had some advan some good advantage to the Judean people but here's the catch how did Rome enforce their rule through terrorism um, crucif crucifixions were common. Crucifixions were Rome's way to sexually humiliate someone publicly by giving them capital punishment and sexual humiliation all at once. It was also a religious blood sacrifice that the Romans brought in such a manner. And it would be common for the Roman authorities to crucify all families, maybe 20, 40 people, and you would be hanging days on that cross Till you till you died and people would, would, would be allowed to throw stones at you and all of that you were basically deemed worthy to die by the authorities and most of the time by the approval of the local community so the Ro the Roman authorities were basically the terrorists that took advantage of the Judean people this region was quite fertile and there was coal just below here so this region was very important to Roman rule. 
That's why they placed three legions, three legionary camps around here. Around 30,000 soldiers, 30 to 50,000 soldiers around Judea. And that's close to Egypt, where there's both a legionary camp and a naval base. And there's another naval base around here, also close to the Levant region. So this place was quite important to the Romans, because this was also the place from where you trade would continue towards other Asian kingdoms and empires through, through land and through sea. Okay, so why I need to reveal this to you so that you understand the context in which this is happening. So the Roman authorities were the terrorists. The Judeans were looking for a safer, someone that could politically, could politically liberate them from the Romans. But watch this. Jesus came and preached the kingdom of heaven. And he said, my kingdom is not of this world. What happened was is that the Romans were pagans. They were in dark. They were the Judeans. They did have the Torah, but they followed after traditions that seemed to be based on the Torah and the prophets, but was not. The Judeans and the Romans were both in tongues and they were both as both pagans. The scribes and Pharisees were the religious and political elite. They received their paycheck from Rome. But at the same time, they were against Romans, against the Romans. The Romans, on the other hand, they needed this region, so they had to appease the people in some manner. So they did the same to, Ju to the Judean, the Rome, R Rome's elite, they did the same to the Judean elite, in the sense that they were two-faced, so there was no, there was no difference between the two. And what the Judean people knew, were ter knew was terrorism. And the fact that they wanted to fight against Rome, Prove that they identified with Rome and they identified with Rome's terrorism. That's why you had so many domestic terrorists around here. But hold on. Jesus came to preach the kingdom, which was not to use violence to overthrow another form of violence, but to use the kingdom of heaven to overcome evil with good. Now, why did they resist this message? It's because they identify themselves with terrorism. So that's why when they want to seek for a solution, they sought it in the framework of terrorism. Either by appeasing the Roman authorities like scribes and Pharisees did by being two-faced towards them, or, or by seeking a way to exercise blood vengeance upon the Romans. But still, it, they identified with terrorism, and Barabbas reflected what they identified with. Now listen, the people were not happy with Barabbas, because Barabbas endangered them, because the Roman authorities could easily um, take out their anger on a small portion of the population. This is something they often did in the regions they've dominated. So the Judeans were not happy with Barabbas. Those Romans were not happy because guys like Barabbas, they gave hope for an independent Judea. And this is something about it was practically possible. So this, so this was a very threat to the Roman world. So both were wanting to get rid of Barabbas. But when it came to it, when the light manifested amongst them, then their darkness was revealed. And when their darkness was revealed, they pre preferred to remain in the darkness than giving up the darkness. And instead, of, they preferred to remain in darkness than to receive the love of the truth and be saved. They were used to darkness. They were used to being afraid. They were used to endure tyranny. They were used to live in denial. So when they had to choose, most chose something they were familiar with even though what they were familiar with was wrong and it had no I say it had no objective basis in reality to, into choosing it. Jesus that brought healing and deliverance on the earth and even many Roman officials um, when Jesus was doing his ministry uh, believed in unto him but yet his own people didn't want to believe unto him, his own kin 
Why? Because then they would have to admit that they are they are just like the Romans. They would have to admit that their division Oscar stem is just an illusion. So they chose Barabbas. They chose what they identified with. And when I used to read the story of Barabbas in the Gospels, I often wondered myself, how could these people be so stupid to choose a robber, a terrorist, a murderer, instead of Christ, the Savior? But you know what? That's what a lot of people do every day. I'm not and I'm not only talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about there are believers that are still identifying with the world and they are choosing what they are identifying with. They are choosing the same darkness that's plaguing them. And this is the thing, when you identify with darkness, you are identifying with the illusion that darkness the fake promise that darkness might deliver. And I'm saying that it's a fake promise in the sense that it's not enduring. But okay, let me explain this. For example, scapegoating, victim blaming. It is effective and it does generate a kind of peace among the community. But the peace is superficial and it won't last. So it's a fake promise. It does deliver what it promises, but the promise is still fake, it's still unreal. So when people identify with the world, the world they are identifying with the fake promises. And those fake promises always have plagues attached to them. Now often people are looking for deliverance from the symptoms, but they don't want to give up the illusions themselves. They don't want to give up the lie. And that's is what's happened. That's what happened that day they chose Barabbas instead of Jesus. Now I wanna war I wanna reveal this with any time you choose not to agree with Christ Anytime you persist into some mind structure or some statement or any way of thinking or feeling that contradicts the gospel, you are choosing Barabbas. You are choosing Rome. You are choosing demons. You are choosing principalities. You are choosing oppression. You are choosing stagnation. Now, I'm not telling you this to put you under pressure or anything like that. I want, just want to reveal to you how it is. Because many people think that choosing Barabbas is an extreme uh, is an extreme occasion, but this is an attitude of the heart. It's a common attitude of the heart, and it is so common that people are not even frightened of admitting it exists. But people don't point out the evil of it. That's why we think it's normal. And it is normal for those that are stuck at the mental equilibrium. But it should not be the norm for those that are born again. Well, I also want to point out this to you. The story of Bar Barabbas versus Jesus is far deeper than you. It goes far deeper and it is far bigger than you thought. And I just revealed to you what's about. They've identified with Basically, they've identified with something that never existed. Why? Because the Judeans that chose for Barabbas, they wanted to have an independent Jewish kingdom in full glory. Well, that kingdom never existed. Even under David and Solomon, the kingdom was uh, the Judean society was was a mess. Okay, and now we had the Romans over here, and now they were projecting their blame on the Romans, that generation. But what they were identifying with never existed, and it was impossible that it would ever exist. Because they wanted to have um, life on their terms, while rejecting the way that should end the life, who is Jesus. Are you doing the same? I'm not saying this to condemn you, I'm saying this to awaken you. Well, that's it for now. May the peace of the Most High be with you. Shalom.